Hello and welcome back to another episode of Teardown Tuesday. Today we're talking about a particularly rare part. And this part is rare for a reason, and we'll get into that in a moment. But what this is, is a flame safety valve, or a flame safety switch. And this particular part was made by Robert Shaw, and it's called an FMDA. And the FMDA flame safety was very common in the mid-century into the 90s and early 2000s but in 2007 this part was discontinued it was no longer manufactured by Robert Shaw and a lot of the manufacturers that used it in their components like pizza oven manufacturers or convection oven manufacturers had to come up with conversion kits and engineer replacement parts this particular part comes from my personal collection I've had it in a box for about 10 or 12 years, and I've saved it. And the reason that this part's discontinued, that it's hard to find, and that I keep it in my own personal collection, is that this component uses liquid mercury. So we've talked about other, we've torn down other components that use a cap tube and bulb, like this BJ thermostat system, where there's a fluid in here and the fluid heats up and it expands. As it expands it travels back through this capillary tube and puts pressure into the bellows. Well, this mercury switch works the same way. We, ha we still have a bellows and we still have a, a cap tube and we still have a bulb except they're filled with liquid mercury. And in the mid-century this was fine, right? 1960, 1970 no one had any concerns. As we moved into the 2000s, mercury was recognized as a toxic substance. And because of that, we wanted to get it out of kitchens. So as mercury was removed from components, we had to come up with alternatives. So this particular component has a liquid mercury charge in the bulb and in this cap tube. And then it operates the safety valve using the expansion of that mercury as it heats up. If you run across one of these, chances are the manufacturer of the equipment either has a conversion kit to go to a thermocouple system where we use electricity, or they've got a different style system altogether. Sometimes you can still find these as remanufactured, but Robert Shaw has not produced them now in over a decade. So with all that said, Let's take a look at how it actually works. So the valve itself has an inlet on the back here, and we have our outlet up here, and then we have two ports up on top with an adjustment screw. And the port on top here has an inlet arrow and then the outlet. So in the normal sit setup, this valve would have gas standing on the inlet, and it would have gas here at the pilot inlet. And this style valve was offered in a couple different configurations. Some of the valves don't have the separate inlet. So we have gas coming in. When we want to light our pilot, we push down our safety button, and that allows gas flow through to the outlet for the pilot. Once the pilot has warmed up our bulb, the valve internally opens. And then when we release the button, gas is allowed to continue flowing. So we'll see how that mechanism works internally, but before we do, let's take a look at what actually happens when this is heated. So if we take a look, let's see if I can get it just right so you can see it. Alright, so you can see here our bulb, and then internally there's a very small disc, small valve, that will open as we heat our bulb. So as you can see, our small little diaphragm has opened up. And as we cool back down, down inside the valve, we'll see that diaphragm come back shut again. Alright, so now that we've seen how the valve operated, let's go ahead and open it up and we'll take a look at the mechanism inside it. Now again, this does have mercury in this system, 
but the mercury is sealed. So we're not at risk here to open the valve because the mercury is sealed into this cap tube and bulb. If you encounter one of these in the field, you never want to cut this tubing because that will release the mercury. So to open the valve, we've got our Torx screws here that tell us that the manufacturer doesn't have anything serviceable in here. They, they didn't want you to open this up and service it. So we have our secure or our, we have our Torx bit and we'll go ahead and open this up. All right. So inside the valve, we can see that there's really two separate chambers. The first one is this top portion where the pilot gas is controlled. And we can see there's an adjustment screw for the pilot gas and the button on top of the valve works that section. The underside here, we can see there's a, a lever system. Then there's this pin and it looks like once the, the mercury bellows has expanded, it's pushing this lever up and forcing this pin up into the upper part of the body to maintain that pilot gas flow. That's what it looks like is happening there. Just want to go over this mechanism real quick. So the gas inlet here has gas pressure standing. When the linkage arm is all the way up, it's holding this pin up with just the slightest amount of pressure. And when you push this button down, it acts like a bypass. So you push the button in, you get gas flow through to the pilot assembly to heat the bulb. Once that bulb heats and that linkage arm moves down, it takes the pressure off this pin. And this pin moves a very, very small amount. You, you can just, you can't hardly see it. But when this pin is able to drop down, the gas flow is able to sustain through the valve even after the button is released. So that linkage arm moving down takes the pressure off that pin and if for whatever reason the, the flame went out it would bring that lever arm back up and put pressure on that pin and bring the valve back to a closed position. So it's really hard to see that, right? That flow. So what I'm going to do is hold this up by the camera and blow into the back inlet here so you can hear what that sounds like as the flow moves through the valve. So you'll hear first no flow, then full flow with the button pressed in, and then the limited flow with the valve released. And that limited flow is regulated by the screw here. Overall, a really simple safety, but you can see it's sealed up. I can't really take it apart without destroying it. So it looks like we can pop this out to get to the valving action over here. And we'll probably have to loosen this up to get the actual bellows system apart. Let's see what we can do here. All right, so we've broken this loose in the vise. So inside there we've got a spring, a small guide rod on the end of the cap. It's a pretty intricate little cap. And then our plunger, and you can see the lever action inside there that actually pushes on our plunger. So that just sits on there like that. So the spring holds it closed until that lever arm pops it back open. Now, 
this around the edge is a, a rubber seal, a rubber washer. So because of the, the mercury hazard here, I don't want to take too much of the bellows apart. But if we take a look down inside, there's a very small bellows visible down inside here. And that small bellows, all the way down on the bottom, has a, a pin that's pushing up into this mechanical linkage. So what I'm going to do is put my pick down in there and push up on that same pin so you can see how that linkage would actuate. So here's, here's the linkage and then if I push up with my pin the deflection of that little piece of metal that the bellows pushes against causes this whole system to rock back and forth. And you can see there's a small adjustment here, or what I think is an adjustment, on this tension, tension arm. But pushing up on the pin causes that linkage to, to lever that arm down. And again, that arm levering down would push open our little safety here. So once that mercury's heated up and that bellows has expanded, this arm is going to shift, it's going to move. And then that causes the gas to flow through the valve and it maintains our pilot gas flow. So it's a pretty straightforward system. It's very simple. There's not much to it. These were very reliable in their time. When these were in service, you, you generally didn't have problems with them unless something happened that this cap tube and bellows leaked. The other thing that you would see sometimes is the um, pilot wouldn't hold a high enough flame temperature to keep this cap, this uh, bulb hot. So people would replace these because they actually had a, a partially clogged pilot, not necessarily a bad flame safety. But these were in service for a long time. They were very reliable. The other thing that could potentially happen is this rubber seal would start to fail and then you would have continuous gas flow even when the valve was supposed to be closed. But that, that was a pretty minor problem. I don't recall seeing that very often. Alright, well that's about it for this one. Again, very straightforward valve. If you run across one, don't cut the pilot tube. That's the big thing. Be very careful about the pilot tube. Make sure you don't cut it, compromise it, break it, twist it off. Alright, thanks for watching. Hi folks. My name is Jack Kell and I'm a senior technical trainer for SmartCare. The video you've just watched is part of a larger series of technical training videos we make available to our technicians at SmartCare. If you found this interesting and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. I'll be releasing a new component teardown video every Tuesday in 2022. If you're already a SmartCare technician and you have a part that you'd like to see me tear down, please reach out to me internally for shipping instructions. If you're not a smart care technician, but you or someone you know would like to learn more about a career as a service technician specializing in commercial restaurant equipment, please check out our open positions at www.smartcaresolutions.com forward slash careers. Thanks for watching.